Investigators, this is a case about a mother of two trying to turn her life around, helping others, and then she's found dead, hanging by her shoelaces tied to a mailbox. The coroner called it a suicide. The sheriff calls it an open investigation. Her parents say she was murdered. You know, because I told him Jessica did not commit suicide because Jessica would never do it that way in the first place. I know Jessica, and she would never have done that. Well, because first off, my daughter was very vain. She's She was, uh, you know, very pretty, and um, she wouldn't have done it like that. You know, there's just no way. I recently spoke with Jessica Johnson's parents over the phone for about two hours the other day, and after you hear what they have to say and who they think is involved, this story just might haunt you as well. So you think that there is more than one person that killed your daughter? Yeah. Now, before we dive into the case, I want to let you know that the content is for mature audiences, and it still might not be for everyone. And if you're new here, please hit subscribe and think about writing a review on Apple Podcasts. I'll give you a shout out on a future episode, and it really helps independent podcasts like this one get noticed. I'll also post case file photos on my website, truecrimedeadline.com, which when you're there, you can also sign up for an upcoming newsletter. Details are also in my show notes. But first... The Mysterious Death of Jessica Johnson. Investigators, you're on deadline. From the Hollywood Hills to your ear holes, this is True Crime Deadline. A podcast discussing cold cases, murder mysteries, and completely random thoughts. Now, here's your host, a man who stands in front of crime scene tape and talks on the TV box for a living, Mr. Mystery himself, Matt Johnson. Investigator, thank you for joining me for episode 20, The Mysterious Death of Jessica Johnson, No Relation, which takes us to Horn Lake, Mississippi, a small town of about 27,000 people, according to the last census and it's located in the southern United States. Horn Lake is the DeSoto County seat, about 15 miles from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, which is why Elvis Presley was probably drawn to it. He owned a 154-acre ranch in Horn Lake in the 70s. Nearly four decades later, single mother of two, Jessica Johnson, called Horn Lake home. Her mom, Linda, tells me that she loved helping others, loved her kids, and loved her family. So tell me about Jessica as a person, and, you know, what's the legacy that she leaves behind? Jessica was a, you know, uh, full-of-life person. She loved everyone. She was um, life of the party. Wherever she went, Jessie was always, even as a child, Jessie was just, Loved by everyone. Um, she was a single mom. She's a mother of two children. Her son is almost 22, and her daughter that lives with me is Eden, and she's 10. She just turned 10 in July. On June 2nd, 2017, a mailman made a gruesome discovery. Jessica was dead, tied to a mailbox. KMC Action 5 News then reported that the DeSoto County coroner determined her cause of death as asphyxiation due to hanging, and that the premature investigation pointed to suicide. But Jessica's parents say that she was murdered, and even hired their own forensic expert who disagrees with the coroner's findings. Well, my husband and my grandson, they struggle, you know, a lot, because, uh, you know, you'd ask me what has been done with the investigation thing, Nothing's been done that, you know, they wrote her death off, off as a suicide. Um, I mean, actually, nothing was done from the very beginning. They they said it was suicide, and that's the way they left it. And, you know, um, everything has been destroyed. Um, her her clothing, um, everything that was uh, sent to the um, crime lab scene has been lost. Her clothing was um, burned, and they just stuck it in a biohazard bag, and uh, I know you're probably going to think I'm crazy, but 
in the very beginning, I believe that um, the coroner at the time, he's since passed, um, just had out had it out for Jessica because him, um, you know, because I told him Jessica did not commit suicide because Jessica would never do it that way in the first place. I know Jessica, and she would never have done that, you know. You know, there's so many things, Matt, that I could tell you, like um, Channel 5 News, which is a local news team here in our area, was on the scene before the police officers even arrived. Now, that's a strange thing to me, and my husband says, well, you know, don't worry about that, but it's something that stays in my head, you know. Why were they on the scene? Who called them before the police officers were even notified? Linda and I talk for a few minutes. She's holding back tears and hands the phone to her husband. Here, man, I'm going to talk to David. Uh, okay. But here's the bottom line. The police the police are involved in this. I mean, you know, there's, there's no way that I can prove this now, but there's so much more to this that's not even being uh, uh, reported or addressed. So walk me through what happened that day that we know and when you found out well, I can that something had happened to your daughter. Okay, well, I can tell you this. The, uh, the coroner, when he come up on the scene, he run uh, – Channel 5 had got there, and they run Channel 5 off. They told them there was no nothing here for them, and so Channel 5 just left. Okay, there was four guys sitting on the front porch of the house while all this stuff was going on. There was a male woman that was the first one there, and she freaked out, and she called uh, one of the other male guys, and he comes over there, and he was a... Uh, he used to be a mortician, and he took pictures. He took pictures of, and he called the police, but he took pictures of her that day. Now, then uh, when Pounders got there, you know, when he was doing his thing, which he's the coroner, right off the bat, he said it was suicide. What was going on in your daughter's life around that time, and why Why do you know it in your heart that she wouldn't have committed suicide? Well, because first off, my daughter was very vain. She's, she was, uh, you know, very pretty, and um, she wouldn't have done it like that. You know, there's just no way, you know. Um, she wouldn't, she, if, she, if she would have done it, uh, which... She would have she would have take taken some kind of pills or or something and 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 went out like that. There's no way that she you know that would have been a painful way to go. The way it, to hang yourself on a mailbox that's only like uh, less than 42 inches. Supposed to standard size from mailbox is 42, and this one's less than that. I mean, I find it really hard to believe that someone could die that way to begin with. I mean, what was the coroner's answer to that or the sheriff's answer to that? Hi, friends. We are Carl and Joanne. And our podcast is Goldilocks and the Silver Fox. In our lighthearted podcasts, we share our unique ability to find humor in our marriage, adventures, and everyday life. Everything from crashing cars. Practical jokes. Unique blend of sarcasm. Joanne's ADHD. Carl's ability to be annoyed and entertained at the same time. If you need a little laughter and want to have some fun, find us on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you upload your podcasts. We are also on YouTube. Just search Goldilocks and the Silver Fox. Goldilocks and the Silver Fox. Goldilocks and the Silver Fox. See, my daughter... She got in trouble uh, prior to this a, a while back, and she got in. in uh, but she, but she ended up. She stayed. Uh, uh, they wouldn't let her out of jail, and they wanted her to, you know, uh, uh, narc on some people, and she wouldn't do it. 
you know, she's real. She's she's real headstrong and a loyal person. Even though you know I didn't agree with the stuff, but anyway, the bottom line was she wouldn't do it. She spent uh, thirty eight thirty eight days in jail, and I had to go before the judge. And the only way he would let her out is if I paid for her to go to to rehab. And they put a fifty. She had I, to to tell you what she had on her. She had two. Adderall pills in her pocket. Yeah, that she didn't even know she had them in her pocket. But anyway, I had to pay all of it up front and get her into a rehab. And when she went through her rehab, she did really good. She got out. She got a job. She was clean. She was doing all this stuff. And then her boyfriend at that time, uh, who she was trying to and not Garland, this other one, that she was trying to help and trying to get him, but he was still messing up. And he got, um, she finally got some money, and she was financed a car, and um, she was working at West Memphis Steel. She was doing really good, and he got her a car seat. And through Homeland Security, while she was at work, and they would not give, we couldn't even get the car back. And uh, so she lost the car. Ultimately, she ended up losing the job. And then she just started going downhill again from there. And then that's when she ended up, because this guy ended up going to jail. And then, uh, so she ended up getting with this garland. And then that's where we ended up where we're at now a lot to it but okay so let's talk about the house then um where paint me a picture of where this house is located and who is the owner at the time or renting it who's around um well it's uh, jesse isaacs is probably sitting on about three acres it's right on the corner and there's a stop sign right there it's it's like kind of you know, all the housing out there has got like, um, you know, a couple acres, you know, and um, it, the house that's on it's kind of a small house. And um, the driveway is on one side and the mailbox is on the other side where there is no driveway. Where the mailbox is, you have to almost go like through a little wooded area and a, a grassy uh grass and all of that kind of stuff away from the house and and there's no lighting there's no nothing whereas with the driveway there is somewhat you know and uh, uh so that you know it just don't and her shoes were over on the other side in the driveway so that meant that she had to walk barefooted through all of that at night without being able to see him. My, my daughter wouldn't do that. Yeah, now what do you say that, what do you think that that tells you and what do you think that that should tell investigators? The shoes are located in the driveway. Her body's located, you know, on the other end of the property. What do you think that that points to? Supposedly, she was killed in that house and then took out there. And, uh, but she's got, she's got, they had all kinds of little red marks and uh, all kinds of stuff on her things, and they were trying to they were trying to say that it was uh, insects and it was this and it was that. But uh, when we talked to people, the uh, the imprint had to have been done after she was dead because the blood, uh, you know, the you know because there was no blood flow. You know, because if there was blood flow, you know how it would it would either bruise or it would uh, it would come back. But this, you know, her blood wasn't uh, circulating, so it made an indention and it stayed. And um, the other thing is, when they sent her to uh, the state, has the autopsy thing, and there they got a backlog. But they sent her to an independent. Uh, 
to do a, an autopsy, and they didn't do a full autopsy. They didn't do really do anything. And he said, Pounder said, before any toxicology report or anything, he said she had uh, Xanax and all of these things in it, in her, and uh, and Xanax and meth and whatever, whatever he said. And uh, they hadn't, they didn't even have an autopsy. They didn't, they didn't even have a uh, none of that. And then he made the uh, um, the death certificate out without having any of that on, you know, on there. So there was no autopsy and no toxicology report official. Not that we we've, we've gotten, you know. We and believe me, we've asked and. And you're telling me also that the what is or could be evidence, all of her belongings, they were destroyed. Is that right? Yes, that's right. The the if the shoestring that uh, and you have to see it and uh, and uh, how somebody could tie it the way that that was tied and the way it was done, and also if you look at the way that. Uh, she was she was done uh the shoestring went around her hair her hair you know if if and i i'm just gonna say this if if a woman was gonna hang herself like that, she would have took the shoestring and put her hair over the shoestring to get it around her neck this shoe this shoestring went around her hair and and it was going up around through her mouth. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's uh there's just a, there's there's just a lot of stuff that don't that don't make sense. Because one of the guys right now, he's in jail right now. He's down in in uh Hernando and uh you know, and and the funny thing about it is is some of them are talking, you know, and they're saying things, and uh, but but it's nothing being done about it. And without saying names, but so you think that there is more than one person that killed your daughter? Yeah, uh, her ex boyfriend and her other boyfriend. That's because they. They were actually friends, and um, then they weren't for a long time because of this. And then uh, he was uh, jealous. And then I found out later this uh, the other guy had uh, did some stuff to my daughter. He he actually had got her. She uh, uh, tricked her and uh, had her. He did, she didn't know he was going to be there, but he ended up he he raped her and humiliated her at a tattoo shop. And um, so there's a, there's a whole lot of stuff that that's come out, but none of this none of these people have been been investigated. They've just gotten away from got away with it all. I guess that's the the whole point in keeping the story out there is just to not let it go unheard and not let it just keep the story yeah, out there. It, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, I I, I agree. I, I struggle with this every day. I've got if it, if I didn't have my granddaughter here, uh, who's ten and. Uh, to, and of course, I've got my other family too. But um, if I didn't have that here, I, I'd probably be, I'd probably be in trouble right now, uh, because nothing is being done. And I know there's a lot of people involved, and I know, I know what's what's pretty much happened, and a lot of other people know what's happened but nobody's nobody's going to do anything about it because there is no evidence anymore there is no there's nothing 
what avenues have you um, reached out to and what, what has your family done so far? You have to remember, this is going on two and a half years. And, um, you know, and when they've lost all the evidence, and we're we're just we're just kind of you know where can we go with it? You know what I'm saying? I mean, what what can what can we do? Uh, nobody, ever, you know, we we have people. We've had people come and say, you know, they want to investigate and do this, but when they when they do, they get stopped short when they go to uh, start dealing with the horn lake because they're not they're not entertaining anything. But when they talk to them, if you call up there now and probably talk to them, uh, they'd probably tell you it's an ongoing investigation. But they're, but uh, but as far as the death certificate, they've signed off on it, and uh, the coroner's already ruled it a suicide. The uh, uh, they're not doing anything. There's nothing. You can't you can't get past them. How do you like to remember your daughter? Well, uh, she was a uh, daddy's girl. Uh, she called me about uh, every good or bad. It didn't matter. Funny. Uh, she was a funny person, and me and and I have a sense of humor too. We we both do, and we that's how we uh, we made each other laugh. And um, she knew she knew that I didn't approve of what what's going on but she was grown and uh, so it was only so much that uh that i could do uh, on that part of it but uh you know the thing that i remember the most about her is um uh, our sense the sense of humor and and you know and she never walked out of this house without telling me she loved me to what extent all that was going on, I know she was trying to help help this these guys and uh, and ultimately it, it it cost her a life being around the, the bad element like that but me i I'll, I'll always remember the the laughing and the the good times but um uh, but I think I remember the end the worst because i I go to sleep. I, I I see it at night when I go to sleep. Jessica's family runs a Justice for Jessica Facebook page. They're asking anyone who knows anything about the case to come forward and contact the DeSoto County Sheriff's. They're hoping that the pressure will help lead to answers. If you have any information, you're encouraged to call them at 662-469-85. Zero zero. Again, I'll post pictures of Jessica on my website, truecrimedeadline.com, and on social media accounts under the podcast name. This past summer, Jessica would have celebrated her 40th birthday with her kids and her mom and dad that miss her so much. Investigators, until next time. Thank you for investigating True Crime Deadline with Matt Johnson. For more information about the podcast, visit truecrimedeadline.com. And remember, all tips regarding a case should go to the police. Until next time. Mr. Gatsby, want a cookie? Good boy.